Good morning, FCS. How you guys doing? I'm assuming the word uh, in FCS, the F stands for fun, right? Fun Christian school? All right, this is where the confession time comes in. <laughs> well, it's a great uh, privilege and honor to be here. Thank you again. You know, uh, as I was standing there, I had this a little, uh, I guess you can say flashback. Uh, when I was still back in high school, that was actually back in the 1950s when I was attending high school. And some of you are like, 1950s, Stan, are you that old? No, I'm not that old. I just want to make sure you guys are still awake at this early hour. But no, when I was uh, in high school, uh, my senior year, we had these, I guess they were called Bible clubs back then. And I remember I was sitting where you were sitting. It was in a classroom setting. And we would have like a guest speaker or a pastor share the word. But here I am years later down the road in front of you having this privilege and opportunity to speak to you. And who knows? Maybe for some of you here, years down the road, maybe a few decades down the road, you might have that same privilege and opportunity. So it's great to be here. Do you have any Braves fans in the house? Yeah. All right, one. Okay, okay. That's awesome. The rest must be Astros fans. Sorry. We'll pray for you guys. But, uh, you know, uh, before I jump into the subject that I want to talk about, which I believe is very important, just something in my heart, I want to ask this question. How many of you here have friends or at least one friend okay okay that's good good that's awesome how many of you here would like to have more friends nothing wrong with that how many of you here have bad friends no no don't, don't raise your hand don't. it's not confession oh hey confession time again okay look at that honesty huh but you know what when it comes to um, friends or friendships uh, that's something that's important in our life it's part of our life and that's what I wanted to talk to you uh, shortly about this morning about friendships Kind of sounds like a school some of you are attending anyway. And the importance of friendships and actually the power of friendships. And I'll use a few examples today, uh, both in a negative perspective and in a positive perspective uh, concerning friendships and what role friends play in our life and what role you as a friend play in someone else's life. And what I discovered is this, that it does not matter what age you are right now what age you will become in the future, we all want to still have a friend in our life. Because sometimes some of the most, I guess you can say miserable people or people who are down or even depressed are those who do not have friends in their life. Just yesterday was uh, my birthday, I turned uh, 25. And uh, again, <laughs> making sure you're awake. And uh, the day before that, one of my friends reached out to me, a close friend is like, hey Stan, I'm gonna pick you up, we're gonna go hang out. And I said, okay, that's fine. And I knew we were going to hang out, you know, the day before my birthday. And as he picked me up, we drove, uh, you know, to the restaurant. And when I got out of the car, there's another group of my friends already waiting for me. And it was a pleasant surprise. So it does not matter, like I said before, what age you are. It's always good when you can have great people around you. And when I start off with this Bible verse in Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the ways of the wicked leaves astray. And in 1 Corinthians, another Bible verse, uh, 15.33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. So the people that we surround our life with, they will either add value to us or they will devalue us. In other words, the friends that we have in our life, they will either bring something good to us. It doesn't matter what it is. Or they will actually take something away from us. And I want to start off by using this example. Props, yes. In my hand, I hold a lighter. Come on, work, yes, thank you. This lighter over here, is it good or bad? Oh, all right, both. Okay, all right. I'm talking to an awesome crowd. It's both. I can use this lighter to prepare food, to cook food, to start a fire if I'm doing camping, I love camping. But then if I light up this lighter underneath my hand and hold it there, what's gonna happen? Pain. Or if I got nothing else to do, let me just light up this lighter right over here underneath the seat and see what happens. So this lighter over here, it's almost, you can say neutral. It could go in either direction, either good or bad. Whoa, Stan, what is that? It's a butter knife. I didn't wanna bring in another sharper knife. It's a knife. Is the knife good or bad? Both. Both. All right. You guys are awake. Yes. 
I'm still trying to wake up. Knife is, could be good or bad. With the same knife, I can cut, my, cut myself a juicy steak like I did the other day. Or with the same knife, I can hurt someone. And possibly, all right, someone's awake, okay. <laughs> Must have missed that joke, anyway. Uh, and with the same knife, I can hurt someone or actually possibly kill someone. One more example, I think it's in here. Oh yeah, look at this. Mr. Benjamin, $100. I just printed this this morning, no. Uh, $100, is it good or bad? Both, you guys are awesome. It's both. I can do good with this money and I can do evil with this money. I can use this money to bless someone, to sow it into their life. Actually, what I'm holding here is one of the gifts that one of my friends gave me. That's some good friends to have. When they're no longer giving you a $10, you know, gift card. You know, you got to reach this level. It's good to have friends like that. But then I can use the same money to buy things I'm not supposed to buy. To go to places I'm not supposed to go. And just in these three illustrations, I wanted to present to you guys that our friends are very similar like the lighter. Our friends are very similar like the knife or like that $100 currency, money. The question is, which side is that friend or friend exemplifying? Is the friend in your life the one that's lighting up the fire in your heart, in your spirit man, to run after God, to serve God? Or is that friend in your life or friends in your life doing opposite, drawing you to the other fire that comes from another source, the devil himself? Are the friends in your life bringing you satisfaction like that steak did the other day when I was at the restaurant eating it? Or is that friendship that you're in right now actually stabbing you, stabbing your heart, stabbing your soul, stabbing your thoughts, stabbing your emotions, that at the end of the day, you just come home, you're like, oh my goodness, it's so difficult for me to be friends with that person. It's so difficult for me to be around those group of people because I feel like they're just stabbing at my heart and my soul. And what about the currency? Not in the sense that your friends are always giving you money, but as an example, those friends in your life, are they bringing value to you? Or, see there's two groups of people when it comes to earning money. Those who choose to earn it and those who choose to steal it. Because they think that's also like a job. Well, I went, I robbed the bank, I got money, well, there's my payday. So is that friend in your life adding value to you or are they stealing from you? Are they stealing your time? Are they stealing your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your future? And now that was kind of a good part in the sense, oh, okay, you're talking, I know, I know exactly Stan who you're talking about. I'm sitting here and they're somewhere in this room. I know you're talking to my friend. Thank you, Lord. I've been praying for a message like this. You're talking to my friend this morning. Well, let me turn the tables. How about you as a friend? See, we can always focus. Yeah, 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 I know who you're talking about. I got this bad friend in my life. What about you as a friend? Are you lighting up someone else's faith? Are you bringing hope to them when they're going through their dark moments? Is God using you to become that one candle that's lit up to give your friend or your friend's hope. Or maybe it's the opposite. You're drawing your friends away from God. That's a little reality check. Or is it possible that you're leading your friend into the wrong direction? Or maybe like this knife. Instead of you offering them something that's meaty, that can satisfy them, that can give them pleasure that could uh, that could give them satisfaction you're actually you're the one that's stabbing at their life or maybe like that currency the hundred dollars that you're stealing their time so this is all important and today uh 
guys, in this short message, I don't want to focus um, on the negative aspects because I can go talk for hours and hours about that. But I want to focus on the positive aspect and the importance of friendships. And one of them is concerning making the right choices. I spoke about this not too long ago that the choices we make in our life, personal life, and in the friends that we're surrounded with, those choices are like seeds. That in my friendship or my relationship, when I sow those seeds, whenever you sow a seed, you're going to soon expect a harvest. It's just a matter of time. And the challenge for all of us is what kind of seeds am I sowing into the life of my friend? Or what kind of seeds are your friends in your life sown into you? Because it's just a matter of time of what we're sowing right now through our daily choices, through our decisions, we're going to start reaping that. And I remember back in the day, when I was younger, around your age, that some of the seeds that I sowed into the life of my friends were wrong seeds, which forced them to make the wrong choices, and vice versa. Some of the seeds that they sowed into my life, they influenced me, and I began to make wrongful choices. I remember this moment years ago when I lived in another state, we find out this news that one of the youth crashed on a motorbike, on a speed bike, and they're in a coma. And to make the long story short, eventually they said, we, we cannot help him. He's in a coma, very bloated, ma major brain damage. Come to the hospital with the youth and say your last goodbyes. So we all came there, walked by the bed, walked through the hospital, and that's it. And a few days later, he got buried. He was about age 18, 19. But then we learned the other story behind what happened. A group of his friends were riding together and obviously they were not going 10 miles an hour. They were speeding, cutting corners, he wiped out and that's it. And stories like that youth, we can just count and we can continually see in the news that wow, did you hear about this person getting killed? Did you hear about this person? And as much as they're unpleasant, but there's something behind that. Because somebody influenced someone else. Hey, let's go do this. Uh, it's not really right. I'm not sure. But okay, you're my friend. Let's go do it. So here's a thought. That whenever one of your friends asks you to do something, to try something, and inside of you, you get this little twist. And like, uh, I don't think that's good. That's a good thing. Because that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's God letting you know, no, don't go there. Don't try this. Don't hang around with that. As I read previously, that evil company corrupts good habits. I want to do more quick, one more quick illustration. I need, need a brave volunteer, preferably a guy, preferably a guy. All right, let's go. You're the first. Come on the stage, please. All right. Let me move over here a little bit. Go on the stage, on the stage. There we go. Here's an, an example, an illustration of what, how friends influence one another and sometimes in a negative way. Let me see your hand. Try to pull me on the stage. Okay. You see what just happened? And I pushed him off. Who was in a stronger position? I was. Let's give him a hand. Thank you for it. The example here is, this is an illustration of how friends can easily influence one another in a positive or a negative way. It seemed like he was more on top, supposedly in a better position, supposedly seeing things from a better perspective, but I was able to pull him down. And this is where youth, if we're not careful enough, when we surround ourselves in the wrongful environments, in the wrongful groups, that little by little, they start pulling us down. While we think, I got this. I, I come from a good family. I came from a good family. My dad was one of the pastors. But I'm not, I wasn't no Stan the saint back then. I was Stan the sinner back then. And I had wings on my back, but they were not wings of angels. They were the wings of the fallen angel. Because I was following someone else. Because I was surrounding myself with group of people that were doing 
the things at that moment I thought was cool, only later to learn it wasn't cool. And in Proverbs 27, 17, it reads this, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens another. And here's the fun part. We as people, we get to influence others like iron sharpens iron. You as a person, you can influence someone else. And there's a story in the Bible about these three Hebrew friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were taken to captivity as teenagers, they were forced to eat the food that they felt was not in alignment with what God allowed them. And to drink what they said, wait a minute, God forbids us to drink wine. So those three Hebrew friends, they made a decision. We're not going to eat of the king's table. But that could have gotten them to trouble. They're like, no, our position before God, our maker, no, if that, if that means we're going to get in trouble or maybe killed, well, let it be so. But those three friends, they made a decision. We're not going to eat what the king is offering us. And eventually, the final results came out much better. Because the person that was overseeing them got concerned. But then he saw them much more healthier than others and etc. And God blessed those three friends. But their story is not over. Later, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he thought he was God. I'm going to make this gold statue. Everybody's going to worship me. And he gave a command. Whenever you guys see this huge statue. And the music's playing, the trumpets, the drums and everything else. You need to bow down and worship this idol. Again, these three friends are like, no, oh, there's only one God we're going to worship. There's only one God we're going to bow our knees to. We're not going to do that. And they knew that if this time they disobeyed the king, what was waiting for them was a Florida vacation, right? On the sun on the beach? No. What was waiting for them was a hot furnace. So when these three friends disobeyed, oftentimes you see the, uh, drawn in illustrations of kids' uh, books that, you know, everybody's bowing down and the three of them are just standing there. The king got furious. He called them over and he said, if you guys don't bow down, you're going to go in the furnace. And again, they did not bow down. The king got so angry, he turned up the furnace even much more hotter. But it's three friends that said, you know what? If because of my convictions for God, because of my choices that I want to live for God, if that means I'm going to have to die for that, let it be so. And as the story goes, they were thrown into the furnace and they died, right? You guys study the Bible, right? Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> they did not die. In the midst of them three was a fourth one. And as the king says, he looks like the son of God. Wow. That's the power of having right friends, good friends in your life. As I'm going to bring this to conclusion, I want to read one more passage. Proverbs 18.24 a man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And a good illustration of that is Jonathan and David. Jonathan risked his life protecting his friend David. Jonathan did everything he could to help out his friend David. Because the story goes, the backdrop of the story that Jonathan was the son of King Saul. King Saul who hated David. King Saul who persecuted David. King Saul who wanted to kill David. But what I found, guys, so amazing about this awesome friend by the name of Jonathan. I know there's at least one Jonathan here. And they're like, oh, he's talking about me. No. What I found so amazing about this friend Jonathan. He knew that he's the next individual in line to become the king after the father. But he knew something even greater. The hand of God that was upon David. And he was going to be the next king. So this friend said, you know what? I'm willing to step aside and allow my friend to be the next king as it was already ordained to be so. Can you imagine that? Having a friend in your life that is willing to do whatever it takes to see you successful. That you'll have a friend in your life that they're willing to sacrifice their time, their money, their resources, whatever it is, so they can see you happy in life. Can you imagine that, guys, surrounding your life with such great people that even though to me money is not a big deal, but it was pleasant that 
when I got together with my friends, ah, here's a gift, stand for you. It's still very pleasant to know that you have people in your life that we call friends that want to see you happy. They want to bless you. And now the challenge is, are you willing to be that friend? Are you willing to be that person that can add value to someone else? Whether they are your friend or maybe not. Are you willing to be that person that say, you know what? I will go out of my way to do something good for my friend. Because as we begin to position ourselves like that, good things begin to happen. And before we pray, I want to talk about one more friend. A very important friend. And his name is Jesus. And the question is, is this individual, Jesus, is he your friend today? Or you just know him through what you read in the screen, what you read in the Bible? Or is he truly your friend? Because I'll tell you this from personal experience, guys. You will have very disappointing days. You'll have time when your friends will maybe leave you or your close friend will leave you. I had that happen for different reasons. You know, we have what? Close friends or best friends, buddies, acquaintances. We have different levels. I had a couple close friends that walked out of my life for different reasons. Was it hurtful? Yes, it was. Was it uncomfortable? Yes, it was. But at the end of the day, I learned that even if my close friends leave me for whatever reason, I have another friend to lean on. His name is Jesus. Even when everybody else walks out of my life, I know this one friend, he will never walk out of my life. In all these examples I gave you, Jesus positions himself to only add value to all of us here. Can we raise up and pray?